Hello students, and welcome to this lesson on geometric transformations. Our objective today is that we will perform translations and reflections of geometric figures using journal notes and practice problems. So today we're going to talk about transformations, specifically geometric transformations. First off, we need to define that, right? And the definition of a geometric transformation is changing a figure using turns, flips, slides, or a resize. So today we're going to pay some special attention to flips and slides. But before we can get into those, first we have to talk about our image and our pre-image. So the image is going to be the result of the transformation. Therefore, our pre-image is going to be the original figure. So all transformations will have both an image and a pre-image. So first let's talk about our first category of transformations, the translation. So translation is a slide. Or, we can describe it as when each point of a figure is moved in the same distance in the same direction. So if we talk about a translation in terms of its image and its pre-image, the pre-image of this would be xy. And then the image is going to be changed by some amount. So we can describe it as x plus, we'll call it alpha, and b, I'm sorry, y plus some beta. normally the way that you will be given this alpha and beta or bravo is going to be a comma b but then you'll put it into this image here in this way so let's go ahead and look at what a problem would look like for this so we have three points we have our pre-image a b and c and i have my transformation which is given here so this is my a value and my b value so, the way that I can describe this is, this is going to be x plus, and in this case, my transformation of x will be 3. And then I've also got my y value, and my y value will be added negative 2. So I'm just going to use this as my sign. I'm going to use the subtraction symbol as my sign here. So y minus Two. Okay, so let's go ahead and perform those transformations on these three points. So negative three comma nine, uh, we're going to add three, so this becomes a zero, and this becomes a seven, because I'm subtracting two. This will become zero, one, and then this last one will become two comma one. All right, so now that we have our three points, we can actually start graphing our image. So first, we want to assign these names. So I'm going to call them A prime, B prime, and C prime, just so that they have a name. And I want them to be related to the name of our first three points because I know that they are related by that transformation. So we have A prime, and that's going to be at 0, 7. So that'll be somewhere in here. That's going to be a prime. And then b prime is going to be at 0, 1. So that'll be somewhere in here. And then we have c prime, which is going to be at 2, 1. So that'll be out here. And it looks like our distance is, it looks like this is going to be our distance here. All right, so we connect these all together. And so our image will look like that. 
So what we see is that the movements that each of our points made to their image follow the same line. So they have the same distance and same direction from their original starting point. So that's translations or slides. Now we're going to move on and we're going to look at some reflections or we might also call them flips. So our definition here for reflections is that they are a figure flipping over some line. So that line could be a lot of different things, and we're going to talk about a few different lines which we might reflect across. So we have our x-axis here and our y-axis, so we're going to talk about flipping over x and y-axis first. So if we have reflect over x, then we go from x comma y to our point will then change to be well, if we're reflecting over the x-axis, remember it's like this. So if I'm performing a reflection here of some point over the axis, then it looks like, well, what values changed? My x value itself didn't change. It looks like my y value changed, and that's exactly what happens. So our x stays the same, but my y is now negative y. And you guys are really familiar with this from algebra, so this is going to be a quick reminder for us. The same thing will occur here. So I have x comma y, and now I'm reflecting over the y-axis. So I'm going to start here, and I'll call this b1, and now I'm going to reflect over that y-axis. And this becomes b2. And so my y value didn't change, but my x value became the negative of what it originally was. So this becomes negative x comma y. Alright, so now let's talk about some other lines which we might not be familiar with. So we're just reflecting over some horizontal line. So I'm just going to draw a horizontal line here that will be our line of reflection. And so, if I've got reflecting over a horizontal line, let's just say that I pick a point that is above the line. So I have a point above the line, and if I'm reflecting over this line, that means I'm going to flip this point across the line. So I want to count the number of spaces that I am from this line. So I'm one, two spaces away, and then I'm going to reflect across the axis. So I'm going to continue counting past the axis, and so my new point will be down here. So my distance here is 2, and therefore my distance here will also be 2, except now it's below 2. Likewise, if I have um, a point that is below the line, then it will be reflected up across the line. Another way to think of this, right, is to kind of move your entire axis, right? Think of this new line as your x-axis, and then that will uh, help you a little bit on that. All right, reflecting over a vertical line, that's going to be the same thing, right? Except now we're thinking in our y-axis. So um, we're going to move the same distance past the line, but now we're moving left and right. So if I have some point here, and this is going to be q, then, again, I'm going to count one, two spaces, continue to go past, and then this will be Q2. And then finally, we have our, our final rule that we need to memorize, and that's going to be reflecting over X equals Y. And you guys are familiar with this because in algebra, this is also called finding the inverse. So if we graph a line here, this is going to be our line of reflection. So I want to take any point, right, and let's say that I have it here. I want to reflect it across the line, so I'm going to have to move the same distance past this line in a different direction. So what's going to happen is I'm going to count to the mirror, and then I have to change direction and take a 90 degree turn. So if this is R, then this becomes R2. So my transformation now takes a 90 degree turn. So to describe that, the easiest way to say it is x, y will become 
y, x. So, and let's just look at these points to really put that home. So this is the point 3 comma 1. And then if we look at R2, right, this becomes 1 comma 3. So that relationship there, right, we flipped the x and y values. Or we took the inverse. So one note here is perform transformations in the order that they're given. Okay, so for your reflection, what I want you guys to do is there's a question that I'm about to show you. So go ahead and do these two questions in your reflection block, and then that'll be your reflection for today. And then your assignment is your transformation worksheet that you guys picked up. So if you have any questions, please let me know, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.